Okay, before we look at support vector machines, we need to introduce a very important concept, which is called maximum margin classifiers. So let's just do a quick recap of some aspects about separability. So if you recall back from unit six, whenever we have data, we say that it's perfectly separable if you can find a separating hyperplane. That is, there's at least there's one classifier, linear classifier, that separates the data points and makes no errors. For example, here we have some red data points and blue data points, and we can find a separating hyperplane between them. Now, obviously, in most cases, the separating hyperplane is not unique. So for example, in this case, you can draw many lines that split these. And so the question is, if you have data that is separable, how do you determine which one is optimal? All right, to do this, I need to just recap some concepts about hyperplanes. So first, let's just start with a linear function. If we have a vector x in d dimension, a general linear function would be like this. You take the inner product of that vector x, and then you add a constant. The w is called the weight, and the b is the bias. And whenever you have a linear function, the set of points where that function is zero defines a what's called a hyperplane. So if you're in two dimensions, the hyperplane would just be a line. And in three dimensions, the hyperplane would be a plane. Now, the parameters of this, as I said, are the weight and bias. And of course, the line or that hyperplane is only, it's unique up to scaling. So if you have any b and w and you multiply it by any non-zero alpha, you'll get the same boundary um, point. So if we wanted it to be unique, we could just always specify, for example, that the weight is unit norm. Now, Whenever you also have a hyperplane, you can compute the distance of that point to the hyperplane. And it turns out that's actually a pretty simple formula. Just You can do a little bit of math to verify this yourself. You evaluate the um, linear function at that point, and then you just simply divide it by the norm, and that will give you the distance. So I'll have you work some simple calculations like this out um, soon. Okay, next let's introduce the concept of margin. So again, let's assume that we have n samples of data with binary labels. Normally I make the label zero or one, but it'll be a little easier for SVMs if we think of them as plus or minus one. All right, let's assume that they are perfectly separable data. And what that means is that you have some parameters so that you can find a hyperplane that separates the points. So for example, here we have the green points and here we have the purple points and we can draw a line. Now mathematically, we can write the fact that there's a separable hyperplane by these equations. And why is that the case? Well, if I can find a hyperplane, it means I can find a, <coughs> a function, a linear function, that's positive on all these samples and negative on all these samples. Or in other words, for all the positive samples, it has to be greater than some gamma. And all the negative samples, it has to be less than some minus gamma. And if we want to be fancy, we can write these two equations in a single form like this. Now, once I have that, I can define the margin is really just geometrically the minimum distance of these points to this um, line but that's also just given by this gamma over W. And why is that the case? If you recall from the previous slide, the m distance of a point to the line is just the value of that function divided by the norm of W. So when then I take that minimum value of that function here, I get that minimal distance. Okay, with this in mind, we can think about how we pick separating hyperplanes. So here I have uh, some data points, which are perfectly linearly separable. And as I said, um, whenever you have perfectly separating data, 
in general, the separating hyperplane is not unique. So here I've drawn, it's the same data on both sides, and I've drawn two possible hyperplanes. But maybe what we can think is that the hyperplane on the right is better because if we look at the margin from these data points to that hyperplane, it will be larger. So why might I pick a maximum margin classifier? It's just to make the data points as separated as possible. So that leads us to the idea of a maximum margin classifier, which is really just finding among all the separating classifiers, the one with the maximum margin. So we can write that as an optimization problem like this. This looks a little confusing, but if we walk through it, you can see why it works. This constraint in the middle, so we want to pick both a W and a B for a classifier. And this constraint in the middle guarantees that it is indeed perfectly separable. Then the second constraint here, um, make sure that the norm of W is less than one. And when I impose this, I know that the, this gamma will be less than or equal, greater than or equal to the um, margin. So that is uh, uh, how we can get a maximum margin classifier. This is called a constrained optimization because I have an objective subject to constraints. And I'll talk about this momentarily about how we solve these. But let's just assume for now that we could do this. Um, if you could do this, this is what a maximum cl margin classifier would look like. So here's that data that we had from before, from the text. And in this, this is what, when you work it out, what the maximum margin classifier picks this line. And basically what it's doing, it's picking the line with the kind of biggest slab, if you like, um, that you could draw that doesn't hit these points. So it's just really trying to find that line with the biggest distance. Um, but there are some problems with this maximum margin classifier. The first, of course, is that it only works when the data is perfectly separable. Um, if you don't have uh, perfectly separable data, you can't even talk about um, margins. So for example, if you had data like this, it wouldn't work. Now, another problem is that even if you had data that's perfectly separable, it's not very robust. So here's the same data that we just showed here uh, before. And this is the maximum margin classifier. It turns out it looks like this. But it turns out if you just add a single data point over here, that the maximum margin classifier becomes and looks like this. So this becomes very, very sensitive to a single point. And that kind of suggests that the generalization error for maximum margin classifiers might not be good. Now, that will motivate us to find some better classifiers than maximum margin, which we'll talk about in the next section. But before you do that, I want you to just walk through a simple exercise where you compute the margin on a simple data point, data set. 